We purchased 600 of these for 250 bucks. I just listed a very small amount of those last night, and within six hours, we had already sold well over $4,000 of these on eBay. Hey, it's Don here. Today we're going to talk about something that literally most of you would think is junk. I even hear it. I see people that post that underneath my videos when I talk about stuff like this. But routinely, they make us a small fortune. Now, today we're going to talk about something I've shown before. These date back to the Victorian era. Most people wouldn't assume something like this would be worth very much money. Some of these have some damage. These are not complete. They're missing flaps in the whole works. They've been flattened out. These were acquired in a big, huge lot. I actually spent 250 bucks for about 600 of these from a collector. I've even bought more items from that very same collector after this purchase here. Now these have been in my inventory for quite some time and have not been listed. Now when we first purchased these, I listed about a third of the collection we had. We made a ton of money. We went ahead and listed just a small portion this time. The prices are extremely high on these. They are selling for far more than they ever have in just a very short period of time. Within six hours, we had already sold over $4,000 of these. Since then, we've sold hundreds of dollars more so it's a high potential of making around six thousand dollars within a day or so on these items these junk items within just a day's time frame again two hundred and fifty dollar investment on this targeted sourced item we'll show you some close-ups we'll show you some of the sales as well now these are my listings here in the hub. I'm in my store right now. You can see quantity zero for most of them. You can also see that they were just listed hours ago and they're already sold here. Now here's the sales records themselves. You can see what they went for basically. Quite a few different people bought them. So it was a fight over some of them. A large chunk of them went for my asking price. Could I have gotten a little more out of them? Sure. I'm fine though taking it a little less when I have the same person buying multiples of items and paying immediately. So all of these sold without any kind of problem in less than six hours, well over $4,000. We've also sold quite a few more since then, raising that number up even higher. It's something again that most people assume is a damaged piece of paper. You got to get that out of your head. When people think junk when they see some of the items I show off, they're missing out money. They're missing out easy money. This is far easier than anything else I've sold in the last couple weeks. Quick money, easy money, easy to ship, easy to wrap. The chance of something happening is very slim. It's fully covered through the post office as well as signature confirmation for any lots over $200. Now let's look at just a few of the listings to give you an idea on what we are exactly talking about. This is a wrapper that would have wrapped around a pack of cigarettes from back in the day. Many of the packs of cigarettes back then in the 1870s and 80s may have had 5, 10 cigarettes. Obviously they did have bigger ones that would have held 20, but a lot of the smaller makers, the local makers, would have only had a limited amount of cigarettes in each box. Now there would have been a little bit of cardboard in here as well, but the boxes back in those days were extremely flimsy. Part of the reason why there were trade cards, like uh, sports related ones, baseball and things like that, slid into packs of cigarettes. The baseball card helped stiffen it and it also helped draw a demand to buy cigarettes to at least get the cards in them. Now this lot here includes an actual cigarette that somebody has emptied out from this exact box here. So it's a little added bonus. This one did sell for 165 bucks. This item was up probably around 35 minutes before I had two separate offers float in on this. Now, I ignored them. I just figured I'm going to wait and see what happens on some of these because a lot of the items when I first started listing them were being bought or offers placed almost immediately within just a couple moments of me listing them. So, and some of them were actually selling that quick at full cost, no offers, no nothing. 
for me, we've sold this type of item for many, many years, so I do get a good sense on the value. The highest ones that I've ever seen selling in this category of basically a cigarette pack or cigarette pack wrapper are around $600 max. And those are for baseball related ones from the same time frame. So price factor, those are worth six times what the average ones of these are at the very, very bottom end. So price wise, I got the top dollar for these on all of eBay and all of the record that I can personally find on these. Now, who knows, maybe I could have got some more money out of them, but I'm not greedy. I would rather have a bird in hand than two in the bush, and this was easy, quick money. Again, I've got 250 bucks in the entire purchase, and we also have dozens and dozens and dozens more still to list. There are still some active right now. Knowledge is power. Knowing what these are, knowing the potential value, that is the big key. Would you consider a bunch of these types of items worth 250 bucks to invest your money in? Or are you one of the ones that would say that's just junk? You're selling junk. No one's going to want it. That's all junk that you sell, which is fine. I don't care what somebody thinks because I'm laughing literally all the way to the bank with the money. Here's another example. Now, this one's kind of interesting because this one right here, it says sweet briar, but it has no nicotine in it, which I've never heard of. Maybe it's some sort of clover. Either way, this one did sell also for 145 bucks. It as well had a cigarette paper in here where somebody has emptied out the tobacco for this exact item. For collectors on these items, the cigarette paper never shows up. You usually don't find it. The chances of finding like a whole pack of these unopened or unused is almost zip. I know they do show up very rarely. I have run into a few. Now, legally speaking, if there's tobacco in these, even if it's 150 years old, if they test it and it tests as tobacco, even as vintage, you can get in trouble for selling the tobacco without a license. Don't ever sell tobacco products of any kind without legal permits or whatever else you may need. Now, a lot of the company brand names still may exist. Old Judge is one that you can still see around in some cases. Goodwin was a company that was around for a very long time. They've got trade cards advertising all the way up into the modern day times, 1910s, 20s. You can still easily find products from them. Now, this has the tag, the pull. It has a tax stamp. You've got the bottom label, the whole works. It is still missing some. This is no way near a complete cigarette pack. It's still sold for 125 bucks bucks. Again, would you realize the value on something like this? That's the biggest question. That's what you need to be able to distinguish. What's not junk and what is junk? This sat somewhere for a while, a very long time. In fact, through two different sales and no one bought it at the 350 the gentleman who was selling this had it listed at. People came out and looked at it and bypassed it. They assumed it wasn't worth any sort of value. Maybe they don't know where to look for the prices. Maybe they've never touched these types of items to assume it does carry a value. But I instantly knew, made him a $250 offer, which he was extremely happy on because of all the people that looked at this. I came in and I bought it. And from that point on, instead of him putting it anywhere, he just calls me now. So I've bought more items from the same person, the same collector, lifelong collector, someone who has tons of this type of merchandise. I'm selling his leftovers right now for a horrendous amount of profit. That's the key. I know more than the people out there who are my competitors who are buying stuff in competition to me. That is the key to this. This was so easy, it's not even funny. It was so quick, it's not even funny. The items just sold and they are already on their way out to these people's houses. Here's another one. Some of these sell because of the graphics. If you take a look at this one as well, you can see that the tax stamp was literally cut in half. So this could be put in the person's collection. Whoever bought the pack of cigarettes didn't hold much value into that. They just wanted the pack itself. Not that the stamp's worth anything in this one, but it does kind of in my opinion, kind of ruined the, the appeal to some extent. It did sell for full price, 130 bucks for this one. Again, within minutes of it listing, you have to list the details. The biggest factor on anything tobacco is who made it. R.J. Roberts is who made this one. 
everyone I have listed and everything I list of this type, the first thing I always put in the title is the date. The date is one of the most important factors. The second most important thing in any tobacco listing on eBay or anywhere else is the company that made it. The third thing is a label name, if there is one, or a product name. If it's tobacco of some sort, loose leaf or something, that's the name you list. If it's a pack of cigarettes, that's the name you list. If it's cigars, that's the name you list. Everything else you add in after that point. Tax stamp doesn't add a big value to it because most tax stamps like these were made into the millions and they don't carry much of a value. You also see a football shaped parabola sticker up there on the top. That is many cases how they sealed these. Many times people collected just those as well, which I was able to acquire a collection from the same person of those exact items also. And just one more example here. It has the cigarette paper from a cigarette and the actual box itself. Now this one is missing one of the flaps, but it does actually have all of the main cardboard on both sides. You can see the middle section there for the one side and then the far right section also. Now there would be another box on some of these that slid into here or paper cardboard that would be folded into this that wouldn't actually be attached to the actual cigarette part here, the cigarette wrapper or box section. There does seem to be a little flat missing either way you go, but still, $135 on this. This is, I promise you, something most people think is junk. Even just that cigarette paper there at the top that may be ripped and have some gunk on the wet end or something, that could have still netted me 5 or 10 bucks on its own. And it's not in great condition. You might not have even known what that is. So that's another factor you got to think about. People don't pay attention to things like that. People miss that because they assume there's no value in a junky piece of cardboard here. They may not look into this much or realize the date, the age that this was made. Again, there's a lot of these items aren't dated. The biggest giveaway on this one that this one is early, even if there's no date and you don't know anything else about it, is the glass mouthpiece attached. That's only on vintage ones like this. So if you see something like that on a pack or advertisement or something, usually it's something pretty good to get. Now this stuff isn't junk, but most people assume it is. If you ran into a stack of these at some sale, they were dirty, they were dingy, they had dust on them, they're falling apart, some of them, it's pieces, some are ripped, some aren't there, there's stuff stuck on them. Are you going to assume that that's junk? Are you going to assume that something like this is worth hundreds of dollars? Again, I invested 250 bucks into purchasing these. Now, for me, that's nothing. That's just peanuts. I know that may be different for some other folks. The more you get into this, the bigger you grow, the more you're able to buy bigger and more expensive lots. If I had to shell out five, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 for collections like these types of materials, whether it be records, coins, stamps, action figures, whatever the case may be. you got to be able to do that to play this sort of game. This was a no-brainer at this price. This wasn't a toy or anything else like that where a lot of people know about or understand the pricing. This is something that the majority of people walked by. Resellers, my competitors in this very same area where I source and looked at this, and not just one, a whole bunch of them, they all looked at it, they checked it out, they had time to research it, and they still passed. They assumed that dollar was too much, they didn't know what to do with them, or it was too much to deal with, or they didn't have 250 bucks. I don't know, or 300 I guess, at the list price. But anyway, you've got to understand the difference between true junk and stuff like this. Damaged and ripped up items, as I've shown in previous videos, can still sell for some phenomenal amounts of money. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there we go. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
and one. here's the rich person's house. Mm. Yeah, I gotta get that in there. That view is what I was looking for, though. Yeah. Like, uh, just something to throw some views in there. That one's a good one. Yeah. As long as it's still recording. It's, it's blinking. I know sometimes it shuts off after like two minutes. <laughs> 